Good evening and welcome to uh, Wayne Med Direct Live Q&A session today. Um, thank you for joining with us. Uh, I am Dhonini Barupala and I'm the program coordinator uh, for the Wayne Med Direct program. It is my pleasure to serve as one of the facilitators and also the moderator today. Um, this session will allow you to get your questions answered from our panel today. Um, we will share information on how to apply um, to MedDirect program, the admission process, um, the scholarship package, and the, and the benefits that we offer to our students. <clears throat> and we are also going to talk about our program curriculum. Also, um, there are two current MedDirect students in the panel today uh, who are very excited to share their experiences in the MedDirect program. Um, before we begin, um, viewers who signed up for this session um, had the opportunity to submit questions in advance, and we will be um, answering those questions today in this session. Um, this session is live streamed um, at www.wayne.edu forward slash live uh, for you to view now. And it will also be archived uh, for you to view later after this session is done. Um, if you would like to join our conversation by asking questions, um, you can do that by using the, um, the chat option available in the same web page um, as you are um, streaming this session. Um, we will have a brief introduction um, of our panelists first. Um, members of the panel, please share your name and your position. Um, students, please share your name, your year in school, and the major you're pursuing. Uh, we will start with um, Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Warrow. I work in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions as an admissions counselor. Um, Shabana, you next. Hello, good evening. My name is Shabana Mohanan, and I am a financial aid officer um, at the School of Medicine. Um, Priya, you're next. Hi, my name is Priya Sharma. I'm a junior, and I'm majoring in psychology and minoring in chemistry. Okay, uh, you're next, Piers. Hi, my name is Piers Kraleski. I'm a sophomore, and I'm majoring in anthropology. Thank you, everyone. Um, before we start answering the questions, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the program. Uh, Wayne Med Direct is an eight-year BSMD program. Um, it is a very prestigious program, and we are proud to say that we are unique in many ways, um, especially when it comes to the scholarship that package we are offering to our students. Um, there are no other programs that make an investment like we do um, for um, students who are interested in going into medicine. Um, we admit 10 students to the program every year um, to pursue a major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Wayne State um, to obtain their bachelor's degree. Um, students can also um, select from over 40 different majors um, within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, as, as students enter the MedDirect program, they are offered a seat at the School of Medicine. Um, um, so upon graduating with their bachelor's degree, they seamlessly go to medical school to uh, pursue their uh, medical doctor um, degree program. Um, this program is specifically for high school graduates who are passionate in becoming a physician and interested in learning about health disparities um, in um, helping to reduce those health disparities in their communities um, in the future um, as uh, in their capacity as doctors. Um, we will uh, now begin answering um, the questions that our um, the viewers who signed up for this session submitted. Um, so I'm gonna first start with Elizabeth. This is an admission question. Um, so what are the eligibility requirements um, to apply to the MedDirect program? To be considered for the un, uh, for the Wayne Med Direct program, students need to have at least a 3.5 high school GPA, a 1310 SAT, or a 28 ACT. We accept both tests. Do not give a preference to one over the other, um, but we do accept both. We do not require subject tests for admission into the program. Um, highest scores will be considered for multiple tests attempted. 
um, that are submitted with the application, but we also will consider super scores, taking the highest of sub scores, coming up with a new composite. You must be an incoming freshman student, meaning that you can have dual enrollment credit in early college or middle college, but you cannot be coming as a transfer student into this program. You need to be a US citizen or a permanent resident to be eligible for this program. Uh, Elizabeth, one of the follow-up questions that we get uh, with those admission criteria is that um, can, can Canadian citizens apply or um, U.S. citizens born in the USA or permanent residents living outside of the USA but completed have completed their high school education outside of USA, can they um, apply? Yes, those students still can be eligible for this program. Um, you mean the the U.S. U.S. citizen and permanent resident, right? Outside. Yeah, right. You have to be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, but not the Canadian citizens. Correct. Correct. Okay. That is correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the next question goes to uh, you, peers. Um, I am sure the majority of applicants for MedDirect have high GPAs and test scores. How can an applicant stand out from others? Um, I would say in order to stand out from others, um, the admissions committee um, really wants to see that you're involved in something, um, especially within your community as well. Um, for example, when I was in high school, I did, um, or one of the uh, extracurriculars I did was Key Club, and I was uh, involved for that for three years where I had positions on the school board and also the Michigan board as well. Um, and I think that really helped set me apart from other applicants because um, it showed that I was involved within my community and actively doing work in it as well. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Piers. Um, again, I'm going back to Elizabeth. Um, this question is regarding um, the eligibility requirements again. What is the likelihood of someone with a 3.4 GPA and an SAT score of 1,400 Ohio getting into this program. Oh, I think you're you're muted. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Students yeah. students need to meet all the minimum requirements for the admission into this program that I mentioned earlier, the 3.5, uh, 1310, or 28 ACT um, with uh, uh, in order to be considered for this program. Okay, so they have to meet, they must meet all the four requirements. Um, if they meet at least, if they, if they don't meet at least one of them, they would not be considered. That's correct. Correct. Okay. All minimum requirements. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to answer the next question. Um, your website says preference is given to students from a disadvantaged socioeconomic background. Um, do you exclude students who do not fit this category? Um, I should say this statement is uh, misunderstood oftentimes. First, this is only a preference, so it's it's not a requirement. The requirements are the ones that um, Elizabeth um, listed about the GPA, the test scores, being a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident, and an incoming freshman. This is a preference. So even the students who claim that they're not coming from a disadvantaged background can still apply to the program. Um, secondly, um, students do not need to demonstrate financial hardships to apply. Um, there is a misconception that you have um, you have to have uh, financial hardships to apply to this program. That is not true. Um, a we consider a variety of different situations um, that the students express in the application as disadvantaged um, socioeconomic um, backgrounds. So, for example, we do consider financial hardships, um, but there is no income threshold that we consider for uh, a certain uh, financial um, eligibility. Um, if a student comes from a rural resident or a rural school district with limited resources and opportunities, um, it could be from an uh, underfunded school district, underfunded communities with subpar living conditions. Um, that there, there must have been health issues related to the student's family or um, the student's him or herself. Um, the student could be a first generation college student um, or a racial or ethnic minority student who are underrepresented in the field of medicine. Um, a student may have received a free or reduced lunches, uh, come, may come from a single parent household, um, unstable uh, uh, family situations, a variety of different things can fall under that category. 
um, basically any circumstance that has limited or hindered um, the students' access to good educational opportunities and or um, it created disadvantages for their social, personal, and emotional well-being um, can fall under this spectrum. Um, we provide um, the students with an opportunity to explain these circumstances um, in one of the essays you need to submit uh, for MedDirect. Um, then the question also comes up, if I don't have any social or economic disadvantages to explain, what should I write in that essay? Um, should I leave it blank? You, sh you should um, not leave it blank. Um, you may not come from a disadvantaged background, but you may have had a really strong determination to change the world um, through your occupation um, as a doctor. Um, you may have identified health disparities as a major issue um, and may have a strong interest in helping um, reduce them in your capacity. You may have previously demonstrated your determination and passion to serve underserved populations um, through your previous work. Um, so the most important thing would be to express your true motivation in applying to this program and um, that it aligns with the mission of the program. Um, so my next question goes to Shabana. Um, it's a financial aid related question. What is offered as the Med Direct Scholarship? Hello. So for the Med Direct Scholarship, you are eligible to receive um, four years um, during your undergraduate years, four years of full tuition and fees, as well as room and board. And um, as long as you uh, continue to meet the academic criteria and stay in the program, you should um, also meet the automatic, the guaranteed admission criteria into the School of Medicine, where you are eligible to receive full tuition and fees for the four years it'll take you to complete the MD portion. Thank you, Shabana. Um, the next question is, what are the application um, components? So um, first you will have to apply to Wayne State University. As a part of that application, you'll be sending the transcript and um, the test scores. Um, there's a secondary application for Wayne Med Direct, uh, which we require um, three letters of recommendation. Um, two must come from um, two of your high school teachers and one should come from a um, community member that you have worked with. Um, and we also expect you to write um, two essays. Um, you'll be able to see the essay prompts when you access the application. Um, and we also like you to submit your resume which lists your, all your extracurricular activities. So those are the application components. Um, my next question goes to um, Elizabeth. Um, how can I apply to Wayne State and how can I apply to um, MedDirect? In order to apply to Wayne State, there are two applications that we accept. We have our university application and then we also accept the common application. So you submit your application. If you go to apply.wayne.edu, you can access those applications. Submit the application, have your official high school transcript sent. Those transcripts can be sent through parchment, through Naviance, um, through electronically sent um, from your high school. If your high school or if your test scores, ACT or SAT scores are on your high school transcripts, we can take them right off your high school transcripts. Um, you don't need to have them officially sent through ACT or College Board, although we do encourage students to have test scores sent to us when they take the test to select Wayne State as one of their schools to receive their, their test scores. So again, it's your application, common app or university application, your official high school transcripts. And if your high school still sends them through the mail, that's we're fine with that. Um, if your test scores are on your transcripts, then we will take them off the transcripts. If they're not, then you do need to contact ACT or College Board to have them sent. Um, there is a $25 application fee required, or we accept fee waivers. Those can be received through your high school counseling office, through ACT, or through College Board. Typically, once an application is complete with all required documents, you will hear about your admission to Wayne State University within two to four weeks. Uh, one follow-up question, um, Elizabeth, how much is the application fee for Wayne State? It's a $25 application fee. And you oh. mentioned there will be, um, there are fee waiver codes? 
Okay. Correct. For some students? Correct. Students can receive a fee waiver through their high school counseling office, um, also through um, ACT or College Board. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question goes to Shabana again. Um, how do I apply for the MedDirect scholarship? Is there a separate application for it? Hello. So there is not a separate application for the MedDirect scholarship. Um, if you have to apply for admissions into uh, Wayne State in general, and then also apply to the MedDirect program. And once you are accepted, uh, your scholarships are automatically processed. So there's not a separate scholarship application. Thank you, Shivana. Um, um, next question, question um, we are going through, mostly going through um, admission questions. So next question again goes to um, Elizabeth. Um, does Wayne State have a preference for unweighted or weighted GPA? We accept the GPA as it's reported on your high school transcript. Um, so if your school happens to weight that, then we will accept a weighted GPA. Okay. Um, I'm picking a question from the, um, the chat, um, which is related to what you just answered. Um, so what if no GPA is awarded by the high school officially, only percentages are given? I'm sorry, only what is given? Only per percentages, like percentiles. Oh, percentile. Then what we would do is we would take the percentile, we would contact the school to see how, to find out more about their grading system so that we can convert the um, percentage into a 4.0 scale so that it's uh, equal amongst all students um, applying for admission to the university, but also being considered for the Wayne Med Direct program. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so next question is, what are the key factors that the admission committee looks for um, in an application? I'm going to answer that question. Um, so um, basically, applications are evaluated by the Med Direct Admission Committee using a holistic um, review process. Um, so we consider the, um, the, the, the following factors. So we look at academic achievements. Um, we look at your awards or uh, honors. Um, and we uh, strongly look at what you know, what are your intentions in applying to MedDirect, uh, why are you applying, and um, your interest in learning about health disparities. Um, so, um, how do you plan on doing that um, through this program, and why do you why are you so interested in learning health disparities? Um, like I mentioned before, we also look at the socioeconomic disadvantages faced. Um, and we look at leadership experiences, um, extracurricular and team activities, um, letters of recommendation from um, um, academic and community standpoints, um, healthcare experiences, community service, volunteering experiences, a variety of different things that you may have done um, in your high school time. Um, so let me explain what a holistic review is. Um, in, in a holistic review process, the admission committee um, reviews all components of the application. So it is an individualized way of um, looking at one um, applicant's capabilities, um, giving a balanced consideration to academic achievements, experiences, and other um, attributes in the application. Now, every component of the application is an important metric of the student's um, life. Um, their values and goals, um, and when combined, like it gives us a clear picture of what the students' intentions are, and uh, um, in how uh, are they a good fit for the um, program. The committee can um, truly recognize the the potential of an individual to become a successful um, student in the program and a medical student in the future, and also a physician in the future through this process. Um, for example, one applicant may be strong in only one component, but still may, may get admitted um, to the program because the, the review criteria um, will not carry like specific weights. Um, so therefore we cannot say what will make an applicant stand out uh, from others. This is a question that we get answered uh, a lot. Um, how can I stand out from other applicants? Um, we can't really answer that question because um, our students are really unique in their um, um, every possible way. 
So we will look at the transcript um, to see uh, if you have received good grades um, in sciences and math classes. Um, special curricula will be valued, um, but there's no special preference given to those. Um, as long as the minimum eligibility requirements are met, um, including the GPA and the um, standardized test, all completed applications will be considered for admission. And each and every application will be, um, uh, application will be given attention um, um, of the admission committee. Um, so I must say that often, oftentimes um, applicants try to compare their credentials um, to um, average GPA and SAT and ACT scores of admitted students um, in the previous cohorts um, to determine um, the, the possibility of being admitted to the program. Um, because there is no special preference given to students with higher GPAs or um, test scores, those metrics will not really um, give you a better idea if you uh, have a better chance in getting into the program. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to direct this question um, to Priya. Um, who are the best people to get recommendations from? Well, I personally got my recommendations from two teachers that I felt like knew who I was um, as a student because I took classes with them, but also like what I did outside of school so they knew me better as a person. And I also got one of my recommendations from a physician that I shadowed, um, who I also had spent a lot of time with, so he was able to hopefully talk about me in a way that um, he could show who, who I was and why I was interested in the medical field. So saying that, I would find people who would write a letter um, that could showcase what your personality is and how you are as a student um, but what you are like holistically too. Thank you, Priya. Um, my next question goes to Elizabeth again. Um, what is the application timeline for MedDirect? Okay, so all materials, including your test scores, transcripts, the FAFSA need to be submitted by December 1st. Uh, the selection committee will start reviewing the applications just after December 1st. Uh, they'll select 25 semifinalists that will be invited in for an interview day. Uh, decisions will um, decisions of the initial interview um, will notify all applicants by mid-January. Um, and the semifinalists will be invited in for an interview, and that will begin in early February. 10 finalists will be selected from the interviews that take place with those 25 students and offers will be made soon after the interviews are completed. And the finalists will then have two weeks to accept the offer that they, that's made to them for the Wayne Med Direct program. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to you, Shabana, with this question. Um, how can I submit the FAFSA application? So the FAFSA application is submitted online at www.fafsa.gov. It stands for Free Application Federal Student Aid. I recommend to all seniors who are watching right now or who will watch later on to submit your application as soon as possible. Um, if you're a senior and you'll be starting in the fall of 2020, you should complete the 2020-2021 FAFSA that is available. Now, at this point, because you're still applying or considering programs that you're applying to, you can list as many schools as you're interested in. Um, but remember, if you decide to submit an application to the MedDirect program, you are making a commitment. Okay. Um, thank you, Shabana. Um, again, going back to you, Elizabeth. So many questions to you. <laughs> Um, does an applicant need to wait until they um, get access to the state to complete their application to MedDirect? No, so an applicant, um, you, uh, no applicant, uh, applicants can opt into the Wayne MedDirect program when they submit their application. And as soon as they submit that application, um, they don't need to wait for their admissions decision. 
um, on being accepted to the university, um, they will start receiving their the, uh, uploaded to their application all the different uh, requirements for the main Wayne Med Direct program, and they can start submitting those while they're waiting on their admission to the university. But their admission to the university needs to be needs to be contingent upon their admission, or Wayne Med Direct admission is contingent upon their admission to Wayne State University. So they can start that process of submitting their Wayne Med Direct application even prior to them being admitted to Wayne State. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, it's your turn, Piers. After a long time, huh? Okay. Um, what kind of questions are asked in the interview process? Um, the interview. Um, so during the interview, the individuals who are conducting it just want to get to know you as an individual and also want to know why you're going into medicine. Um, and one big thing too is that they also want to know why you're dead or what made you go into medicine as well to see if you're dedicated to it because um, this scholarship you are accepted into medical school right out of high school. So it is a big commitment and you have to make sure that this is the career path that you want to go down. Um, so during the interview, those are the type of questions that the interviewees are um, or the interviewers are asking kind of to, to get to know why you're applying to this program. And they also just want to get to know you as a student in terms of what you've done in high school and the experience that you have had as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to take this next question. Um, uh, I see that some, um, a couple of questions are related to this in the chat as well. So um, I'll answer this right now. So what is a binding commitment? Um, so as you already know, um, some of you may already know, um, Wayne Med Direct um, is a binding early decision program. Um, that means that if you apply to Wayne Med Direct, um, you may not apply to binding early decision programs at any other um, university um, or college. Um, so by applying to Med Direct, you indicate that the only binding early decision application you intend um, to file um, this application cycle is is for Wayne Med Direct. Um, candid candidates have um, the liberty to apply to any other um, regular admission or um, non-binding early action programs. Um, there are some early action programs which will um, let you apply earlier um, than the regular admission cycles, but uh, deliver the decision early, but they're not uh, binding. And um, you can wait until you get uh, you um, get offers from other universities to make a decision um, to whether to accept that offer or not. So you can uh, you can apply to regular admission or non-binding early action programs. But um, if you're applying to MedDirect, that's the only binding commitment program you can apply. Um, um, but I must make it clear that the binding commitment is only um, um, applicable to the Wayne Med Direct program. Um, it's not for admission to Wayne State University. Um, so, for example, if you're not accepted to Wayne Med Direct, uh, although you applied, um, um, at that point, you're most probably uh, admitted to Wayne State University because um, admission to Med Direct is contingent upon the admission to Wayne State. Um, but if any time you're not accepted to the Wayne Madurep program during the admission process, you're not bound to attend Wayne State. Um, you are welcome to consider other um, um, schools and colleges um, that you have applied and got um, offers to. So the binding commitment is only for um, the Madurep program. Um, so that's what a binding commitment is. Um, I think those were the questions that um, the chat had yes i think i saw a couple um so i hope i answered your question um i'm going back to elizabeth with this next question um so if students are um i kind of answered that question so uh, if students are not admitted to med direct is their admission to wing state binding so i uh, i already answered that so i'll move on to priya with that with the next one. Um, are we required to live on campus if accepted to the program? Um, how is the campus living experience? Um, yeah, we all live on campus. 
Um, as an out-of-state student, I um, was going to live on campus anyways, but the it's really nice because the first two years you live um, with med direct students, and then your junior and senior year, you can choose who you live with, but most of us end up living with other med direct students because we get so close after three years. Um, so it's nice to have a community with you, especially when you are starting out freshman year um, and in the summer program. So you feel like you are more comfortable and have people to rely on. And then when you live with them, you have that support basically all the time. Okay, thank you, Priya. Um, because we are kind of um, coming to an end of the admission question. So uh, I'm, I'm picking this question from the chat um, to go to Elizabeth, um, it asks, um, can you still apply for MedDirect after submitting the regular WANE application? So if the application has already been submitted, can you go back to your application and express an interest in the WANE MedDirect program? I think I think that's the question. Can you still apply for MedDirect after submitting the regular WANE state application? Y yes, you, you should be able to go back into your application portal um, and be able to select through special um, programs um, on the application portal. Um, it gives you that option if you want to be considered for the Wayne Med Direct program. If you're not able to do that through your application, then I would encourage you, you can contact me in the admissions office. Um, I can provide my contact information. It is also on our website under um, through wayne.edu and you just do a search for admissions counselors, you'll see my picture. Um, but I can um, certainly update that on our end. Um, we would just need to do that by December 1st since that is the deadline. Um, and you'd wanna give yourself plenty of time to um, complete the required, um, uh, submit the required documents for the Wayne Med Direct program. But yes, we can go back in, even if you've applied and been accepted to the university to make an adjustment for the Wayne Med Direct program. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question goes to um, Shabana. Um, are there any requirements to uh, fulfill to continue to receive the Med Direct Scholarship every year? So, yes, there are academic requirements that you have to uh, meet to in order to receive the Med Direct Scholarship every year. Um, in addition to completing the FAFSA, which is also a requirement, you will have to um, maintain a 3.5 GPA while you're um, an undergraduate student every semester. You have to be enrolled full time in the fall and winter semesters, completing at least 15 credit hours. You must pursue a major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, um, as well at the same time pursue a pre-med curriculum. Um, and you have to complete all the requirements of the Med Direct program curriculum throughout your um, academic years. Um, now, when you're at the School of Medicine, it covers a year of uh, tuition and fees. And then to be eligible for that scholarship to be renewed, you have to um, you know, progress from year to year and, it, and um, meet all of the Wayne State School of Medicine academic uh, criteria for promotion at the time of admissions. Okay. Um, thank you, Shabana. Uh, my next question goes to Priya. Um, does the WayMed Direct program provide a support system to get you through your undergraduate studies um, and the special cu uh, curriculum you follow? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's what's really special about the Med Direct program is that there is so much support. Um, there is the support of the other cohorts um, with students that went through the same process that the incoming class will go through. Um, and then there's advisors that know about MedDirect and then want to help us fulfill all of uh, what's required with the curriculum. And yeah, I think that that support from both students and uh, faculty at Wayne State really make this program have a lot of support um, every each every year okay thank you priya um i'm bouncing back to shavana again uh, what are the pay out of pocket costs associated uh, with med direct and how can we cover on uh, the cost of books 
So during your undergraduate years, out-of-pocket expenses would include things like books, um, but also things like transportation, so gas, um, you know, parking, and also other things like, you know, other personal things like your cell phone bills. So at this time, you know, because those are things that are not covered by the MedDirect scholarship. So you would have the option of considering either loans to take um, out to cover those expenses, or if you were going to take out, uh, I'm sorry, utilize work study, which is an opportunity to work on campus, or, you know, um, if you were deciding to work, you could also work off campus, um, you know, to cover those expenses. During the med school years, only tuition and fees is covered, so at that point, you would have the option of, um, you know, using things like, you um, loans to cover, you know, um, room and board or off campus rent in addition to things like your cell phone bills and your transportation costs. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned uh, about the work study options because that is something available to MedRest students, right? Yes. Okay. Now your eligibility for the work study is determined from the results of your FAFSA. Um, so, you know, that's definitely something I can help you uh, with submitting an application for if you're interested. Okay, yeah, that, that was one of the follow-up questions um, we had um, as students of MED. Um, I'm going back to peers with this next question. Um, does coming in uh, with a lot of college credits help? I know you came with some credits, so I thought like you would be yeah. the person to answer this question. Um, so I did IB in high school, so I ended up coming in with um, a good amount of credits. Um, but I would say that college credits help a lot with gen ed classes or your general education classes that you have to take. Um, because coming in my first semester, I already had most of most of those classes already completed. Um, but in terms of like college credits, like with your major, it kind of depends on what you major in, what you took in high school. So for me, I'm an anthropology major, so I didn't get any anthropology credits while I was in high school. So I had to start like completely fresh with um, that curriculum. Um, but with gen eds, like I said, I had a lot of those already covered um, coming into college um, because of the IB classes that I took in high school. Okay. Um, to follow up, um, I know you have a lot of friends who like started fresh with no, uh, no credits coming in. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you feel about that? Like would is that a challenge if, as you see, or um, is it doable? Um, I don't think it's a challenge. I think it's completely doable and you can go to advisors and um, they can help you plan out um, your plan of work for the four years that you'll be in college. And they'll help you figure out what classes to take each semester. Um, but compared with like coming in with credits, I don't think that they're at any disadvantage that I was um, coming in with credits because in the end we're still all taking the same exact classes anyways that we have to get done okay thank you peers um next question goes to priya um do med direct students take their classes together during undergrad um are there special classes for med direct students only or do they take classes with other wayne state students so most med direct students do follow the same path. So a lot of us are taking the same classes at the same time. Um, but in terms of classes that are especially for med direct, there's one um, your freshman year, first semester, that is um, that teaches you how to do research um, and things of that sort. So that's really like the only specific one for med direct students. Um, but all your other classes are with other Wayne State students, but it might just happen that you are, um, usually, you usually do have at least like one or two other metric students in the whole lecture. Okay. Thank you, Priya. Um, I'm uh, going back to Shabana with this next question. Um, does the metric scholarship change um, if the student is eligible to receive a Pell Grant? So yes, your med direct scholarship could cha would change if you receive like the Pell Grant because all of your financial aid has to fit within the cost of attendance, which is like pretty much the ceiling of how much financial aid you can receive in total. So as not to exceed the cost of attendance, your med direct scholarship would be reduced. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm coming to you, Priya. 
um, again with this next question. Um, how do you determine classes you take each semester? Do you have a mentor or someone that you would regularly meet with to make sure um, you're on track? So I personally worked with my um, major advisor. So for the psychology department, I made a four year plan with my advisor. Um, but there's also the honors advisors that will help you if you're in the honors college um, to make sure that you're fulfilling all the honors requirements. And then again, like uh, students and other cohorts really help um, newer cohorts with classes and when, what to take when, especially for to be ready to take the MCAT and when, we sh when it's best to take certain classes. So using all resources, it would be advisors and other students. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to Elizabeth uh, with this next question. Uh, does MedDirect accept applications from out-of-state students? Um, are there any preferences to um, Michigan residents um, specifically? We do not have a preference uh, towards in-state applicants, and we also don't have allocated numbers of spots for, um, for out-of-state students. Um, so geographic distribution of admitted students is purely random, um, and they evaluate students on their credentials um, for admission into the program. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to ask this next answer this um, next question. Are there any requirements to meet to go to medical school? Um, so as I mentioned um, in the beginning with the introduction, so we do offer our um, 10 students who get into the program um, a, a seat in the medical school as they enter um, as undergraduates at Wayne State University. However, there are um, certain requirements that they need to meet in order to secure that seat um, at the med school class. Um, so those requirements are um, they have to maintain um, their undergraduate scholarship eligibility for four consecutive years during the undergraduate term, uh, which includes maintaining a 3.5 GPA every semester um, and following a pre-med curriculum and also uh, completing the requirements for the med, med direct curriculum and also completing all the classes for your uh, major within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, they also have to graduate with a bachelor's um, um, degree from the university um, in order to get into the medical school. Um, and they will also submit an application to the Wayne State University School of Medicine um, no later than their junior year um, in the undergraduate studies. Um, they must submit their application, um, although this is a pipeline program, um, um, we cannot um, have a student in the medical school without a formal application um, um, in file. So they ha um, still have to go through the application process. Um, and they will also have to sit for the um, MCAT exam um, and successfully complete that um, exam with a competitive score. We no longer um, enforce a minimum score um, to our students um, to get into medical school for the MCAT exam, but we expect them to do well um, in the exam. Um, not only we um, expect, uh, we also prepare them um, well in advance to sit for the um, MCAT exam and get a good score. Um, for example, we provide them with a, a prep course um, in the fall semester of their junior year um, so that they can um, be well prepared for the um, exam before they sit for it. Um, so those are the requirements that um, they need to meet in order to go to medical school. Um, my next question goes to um, Shabana. Um, if a student fail um, to meet, if a student fails to meet the guaranteed admission criteria to enter um, school of medicine, um, what would be the penalty from a financial aid perspective? So if you did everything you were supposed to do while you were in undergrad, but you didn't, for whatever reason, did not meet the guaranteed admission criteria, there is no penalty. Um, and maybe this is a good time to just go into kind of, um, to elaborate on this question. But if you decided, if you did get admitted to the School of Medicine, 
but you chose to attend another institution or you chose not to attend uh, the School of Medicine, there is a repayment uh, obligation for the scholarship that you received, you know, during the undergraduate years through the MetDirect program. Okay. Um, with, uh, I'm collecting a question from the, um, the chat that can go to peers. Um, what are the examples of a community member to get a recommendation letter from? Um, so for me, I got, um, for the community member, I ended up receiving a letter of recommendation from one of my um, mentors when I was served on the Michigan board of Key Club. Um, Cause that was somebody who I worked closely with um, for more than a year. So you really wanna find somebody who knows you outside of school and outside of academics um who can speak to you who can speak of you um in terms of what you do in your community and knows the type of work that you do and um that you are committed to helping other people or whatever it is that you do do outside of school okay. thank you peers um this question goes to priya um how do you prepare for the mcat exam um, do you get any support from the program for this? I know you're going through this process right now uh, because you're getting ready for the NCAT exam. So um, what, what do you have to say about that? Um, so going off of what you mentioned before, there is the um, Kaplan MCAT class that we take in the fall, right? So I'm taking that right now with the rest of my cohort. And then this past summer, so the summer between your sophomore and junior year, um, we go through the Khan Academy um, resources that they have for the MCAT to kind of start getting us into what our following semester is going to be like. And then we can prepare all of this semester and then take it um, as early as January next semester. Okay. Thank you, Bria. Um, the next question goes to Shabana. Um, if an admitted student in this program decides to apply to different medical schools while in his or her senior year of the undergrad at Wayne, uh, what are the penalties? I think you briefly mentioned about it in the previous I, I can elaborate a little bit more. Um, you know, again, just to bring your attention to the nuance, if you are applying to other medical schools because for some reason you don't think you'll uh, meet the guaranteed admission criteria, there's no, um, you know, penalty, you, there's no prohibition that prevents you from applying to other medical schools. However, if you uh, decide to attend another institution with an admission to Wayne State School of Medicine, uh, that's when you are under obligation to repay. Thank you. Um, next question is going to Piers. Um, how much support do you get from professors in class, classes at Wayne State? Uh, so I would say the support you get from professors is um, based on the effort that you put into getting that support. Um, cause, because unlike high school, your professors are expecting you to do work outside of the classroom and um, you're a lot more independent in your classes. So you really have to make sure that you're studying outside of them. Um, but professors, they do have office hours that you can go to. Um, those are usually twice a week. And then you can go there if you need additional support or help um, with the class that you're taking. There's also peer mentors, which are students that have taken the class before and have done well in it that can help you. Um, and then there's also tutors on campus that you can go to. Um, but yeah, overall, I would say the support you get from a professor is the effort that you put into trying to get that support as well. Um, thank you, Piers. Um, Priya, this next question is to you because I know you're an honor student. Um, um, are MedDirect students honor students? What is the honors curriculum at Wayne State? Um, so I believe that you aren't required anymore to be a honors college student, but you still can. Um, so I am in the honors college. I there are some other requirements in that we have to take uh, two classes our freshman year that are required um, and then a certain number of 
other classes that you can take the honors option with so that you're getting honors credit. Um, but it's really nice because the honors college is basically like another community of students um, that you know and are dedicated to their studies and what they're doing. Um, and then it also gives you some opportunities like signing up for classes earlier um, and knowing your professors a little bit better because honors students are usually in another section. Um, so overall, it is a good opportunity that I'm glad that I'm still a part of. Okay, thank you, Priya. Um, I'm gonna yeah. take the next question. Um, what is the med direct curriculum? So as I mentioned before, um, um, on top of pursuing your major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and taking pre-med classes, and uh, if you choose to be a part of the honors um, college, like you'll be following the honors curriculum as well. But on top of all these things, um, um, there's a special curriculum for the Wayne Med Direct program, uh, which is um, structured um, to give you a lot of opportunity to develop professionally, to become a leader in the future. So. Um, that curriculum consists of a variety of different opportunities. Um, one of the uh, few key things that we um, expect the students to do is um, research. Um, I saw a few questions in the chat as well, um, like uh, asking what sort of research experiences our students get. Um, so um, as a part of our curriculum, our um, students have a, a requirement to complete a minimum of two years of research. Um, sometimes students don't come with previous research backgrounds, so we make sure that um, they are getting introduced to college level research. Um, Wayne State um, is a research one institution according to the Carnegie Foundation classification. And we are uh, one of the three um, highest research um, activity institutions in the, in the um, state of Michigan. Um, so we have a lot of faculty across campus um, in a variety of dis um, who does research in a variety of different disciplines. And it's really easy for um, our students to get involved in research by um, um, choosing uh, one of those faculty based on their research interests. So we have our students take a, a research introduction to research methods class in the freshman of our semester. And then we um, uh, encourage them to join research and also we support them um, to find research mentors that are um, um, suitable for them. Um, community service um, is also one key um, a thing in our curriculum. So our students complete a minimum a number of hours uh, of community service throughout the four years. They're in the undergrad, uh, undergraduate um, studies. Um, and also shadowing uh, um, or clinical experiences is the other thing. And we uh, mostly focus on uh, leadership development. So we have a learning community um, that interacts um, all cohorts like in a weekly basis in the fall and winter semester. So we meet up and we bring in role models in, in the field of medicine uh, for students to um, get connected and uh, learn from their um, career paths. Um, and we also have a peer mentor program um, through, the, through our learning community where we hire peer mentors, our own students, our senior students in, in sophomore, junior and senior level um, to um, help especially the incoming freshman student um, who are transitioning from the high school environment to the college um, environment. So they need that extra help to get acclimated and um, you know getting used to this um, um, new um, study environment. So our peer mentors help those um, incoming freshmen specifically. So we, we are uh, fo focusing on a cohort uh, model um, that um, all students in a variety of different um, cohorts um, support each, each other um, throughout this journey. So that's basically our curriculum. Um, um, this next question goes to um, peers. Um, what type of extracurricular activities do MedDirect students um, uh, take part in? Um, so there aren't particular like activities or um, extracurriculars that specifically med direct students get involved in. Um, I think that a lot of students get involved in different things based on their interests. And there's about over 600 organizations here at Wayne State. So everybody's able to find what they're interested in. Um, I know for me, um, I've started getting interested in more like political groups here on campus 
um, where I'm doing students demand action, or I actually volunteered at the democratic debate over the summer. Um, and then also I've been a part of medical organizations on campus as well. Um, but I know some people do organizations in the arts or their intramural sports, um, but it's just depends on the student and what you're interested in. And you would be able to find what you are interested in here at Wayne State. Um, just to follow up with this um, question that goes with mm -hmm. it, um, is is there a time for students to participate in other activities um, and life outside of school? Yeah, um, so there is definitely time for you to do activities and other extracurriculars outside of school. You just have to make sure that you plan um, what you're doing and make sure that you're getting, you know, school work done and still also studying. But you are able to have a life outside of all the work and able to have a social life or able to go out and do all these extracurriculars as well. Okay. Um, I'm um, going to Elizabeth again with uh, with this next question. Um, I'm, I'm seeing that um, this question came up in the chat like many times. So how many applications does um, Wayne Medirect get every year? We typically average about 350 applications and we actually accept 10 of those students, okay. 10 of the 350. Okay. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and this next question goes to Shabana. Um, is med direct program um, less expensive than completing mm -hmm. the graduate studies and then transferring to medical school? I believe they're asking about like a regular uh, pre-med path. Okay, so just med direct is a very specific program that is tailored to students who are sure that they would like to pursue a medical degree and that Wayne State School of Medicine is the best fit for them. If you fit this very specific criteria, um, met, this path will be a much less expensive um, pathway to uh, MD degree, uh, MD. And the reason for this is obviously because, um, you know, at Wayne State, I don't believe there are any other scholarships that cover um, tuition fees, room and board kind of as one unit, um, as well as when you do apply to the medical school, you won't know if you're getting uh, full tuition and fees until you apply and you get accepted. So if you are sure, like I said, if you fit this very specific criteria, this is a very generous uh, scholarship you know, program. Um, thank you, Shabana. Um, we are um, all, we are almost close to seven o'clock, so I'm going to wrap up this session today with this um, last two questions. Um, the first one goes to Priya. Um, uh, I'm not a resident um, in Michigan. Um, I would appreciate the perspective of an out-of-state student. How is it like to um, attend Wayne State and live in? Mm -hmm. You're the perfect person for that. <laughs> yeah, so I was a little nervous um, moving to Michigan, uh, being from Chicago, but I am really glad for MedDirect because they have the four, about four week summer program um, before you start your freshman year. So your cohort really gets to know each other so that when you start in the fall and the rest of the campus is filled again with other students, um, you know for sure that you have people who you know and that you are friends with and you have um, other people. It gets easier to meet other people. So you definitely find your place very quickly. And kind of like what Pierce said before, um, that there's so many clubs and organizations here to get a part of that you really find your place and find a place where you can fit in um, and make Michigan your home. <laughs> so it's not it's not as scary as it sounds. Okay. The, going off of the same question, um, um, I know uh, many parents have this concern, especially applying from out of state, like when talking about Detroit. So how is safety on campus? So, there, I would say that Wayne State's campus is pretty safe. Um, they say that if you call like their police number, then they'll be there in less than 60 seconds or something like that. Um, so that's safe and there's blue lights everywhere. Um, I mean, being in the city, being in any city, you need to be a little bit more careful just to be aware of your surroundings, especially like when it gets dark. 
Um, but that is everywhere. Besides that, um, the campus is safe. There's always a lot of people. Um, and as long as like you know what you're doing and you're being smart and making smart decisions, um, Wayne State is very safe. Okay. Um, this last question goes to peers. Um, so what are the opportunities MedDirect program provide the students which they wouldn't have received otherwise from any other university or program? Um, so I think one of the big things is the fact that uh, you get already, right out of high school, you're already getting involved with um, uh, medical like stuff because uh, like Domini said earlier, we have weekly leadership meetings um, that occur. And so in those, they bring in physicians um, who talk about the work that they do within whatever specialty that they work in. Um, and I think that's really unique to this program because it involves, you're able to network and you're able to learn more about what these um, doctors and physicians are doing within their field. Um, and especially you to see a lot of these physicians are from the Detroit area. So you can see how they're addressing health disparities here in the city. Um, and then also I would say one thing that this program um, also allows us to get involved in is research, um, which is really important as well to helping um, build you as an individual and just make you more aware of what's going on um, within whatever field you're studying and just makes you more of a critical thinker and a lifelong learner, I would say. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, we're concluding this live Q&A session today. Um, I would like to take a moment to thank our uh, panel members for joining with us today. Um, thank you for your time spent answering questions. Um, if viewers have more questions or need more clarifications on topics um, we already discussed, please email those questions to um, med-direct at wayne.edu. Um, we had many questions submitted to answer today. Um, so if you feel like your question wasn't answered, we sincerely apologize. Um, but please email those questions to us and we will provide answers to those questions um, within this week. Um, so for those who may have joined us a little bit later, um, this session will be archived um, after we conclude. And you can access the archived video on the same page as you are viewing this now, which is www.wayne.edu forward slash live. Um, and you can also visit our website at um, go.wayne.edu forward slash med hyphen direct. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today um, and you have a pleasant evening.